When we talk about production, we're usually talking about factories and employees. Maybe, for example, a firm that makes golden snitches. But if you think about it, sports teams are also a type of firm. Take the Golden State Warriors of the National Basketball Association. They have capital, an arena and practice facilities, and they have labor, in this case highly paid basketball players, as well as coaches and doctors. And what do they produce? Well, they kind of produce points in basketball games. Of course, they really want to sell tickets and generate revenue from advertising. But if you think about the basketball team itself and what it tries to do each night, the immediate goal is to produce more points than the other team. This means the tools we discuss in this unit to understand how firms operate can also be used to think about how the Warriors should produce the most points. And just like firms, the Warriors face the brutal law of diminishing marginal productivity. Here's a graph that illustrates this law perfectly. Each dot on the graph is a player on the Warriors. The horizontal axis shows how many shots they take per 36 minutes of play. So if they're far out to the right, like Maurice Spates, they take a lot of shots per minute on the floor. The vertical axis shows how likely the player is to make a shot. So if you're further up, like Andrew Bogut, you're very likely to make each shot you take. Now notice that the dots tend to go from the top left to the bottom right. Why? Because of diminishing marginal productivity. Andrew Bogut and Andre Iguodala are far up and to the left. They take very few shots, but when they do, they're very likely to go in. That's because these two players are very choosy about their shots. They don't shoot the ball often, but when they do, it's because they're wide open or close to the basket. Now look at Maurice Spates, way down to the right. He takes a lot of shots per 36 minute, which means he's not choosy. He has some wide open shots, like Bogut and Iguodala, but he doesn't stop there. And once he decides to take more shots, the shots aren't going to be as wide open. They might be further from the basket and with a defender nearby. What this chart illustrates is as players take more shots, each shot has a lower probability of success. This is an illustration of diminishing marginal productivity. The additional shots are less likely to go in. This rule holds for almost everyone on the Warriors and for almost every NBA player. But NBA fans might have noticed the graph I showed you was missing one player, and not just any player, one of the very best in the league, Steph Curry. Part of what makes Steph Curry great is that he breaks the law of diminishing marginal productivity. Here's the graph again, but with Steph Curry on it. It's incredible. He's way out on the right because he takes plenty of shots, but he's also way up high like Bogan and Iguodala. This means that even though Curry's taking more shots, and therefore harder shots, he's still making them as if he were wide open and close to the basket. Because the Warriors found a cheat code, to get around the law of diminishing marginal productivity, they're a hugely successful team. They won one championship in 2015 and almost won a second in 2016. Thank God Steph Curry never learned about diminishing marginal productivity.